Good afternoon. Welcome. This is the June 22nd meeting of the Plano West Rotary Club. I am Alex Johnson, your president, and I'm going to turn it over to our past president and sergeant of arms, Mike Walker. Take it away, Mike. Hey, hello from Rick Island Restaurant. Oh, and we got a few minutes here for break, but so, you know, Glenn, do you ever, I don't see a dollar out of it. If I can pull that dollar out. Glenn, do you ever brag for us this afternoon? Um, yeah, I just pulled that. I got it. Okay. Um, do I have a brag? Yes. I got to see um, our seven month, eight month old uh, recently. And she got into the pool for the very first time, scared the heck out of her. But after the first couple of minutes, she was loving it. So good. first time in a pool. That's great. Michelle, I, I, you see me getting the money here. <laughs> Up front. Michelle, you ever break? Um, well, just we got to, to see family for Father's Day, which is nice to get people together. And it was a good time and good weather. And so and glad to be here in Greek Isles. Thank you for being here. Collecting another dollar for this break. Do you ever break? Yes, sir, I do. I'm just happy to be here with Plano West and have the opportunity to see some people I hadn't seen in a long time and meet some new folks. Thank you. And I see I'm getting another dollar here. For those of you that are on Zoom, realize that what you're saving by not being here. <laughs> <laughs> but you're missing the good food, too. Um, I want to brag that my grandson Eli that's two months old I was actually discharged from Cook Children's this morning after being there for three days with RSP so very happy prayer works I see Fred's got two dollars out so this may take a minute <laughs> well first I want to brag on Howard Templin being here I haven't seen you in a long time but anyway y'all really missed that treat by not meeting Howard by the way the other one's for the retirement fund for Mike Walker. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Elisa, how about a break from you? I'm going to brag on Gus. I walk in the door and I've already got a little thing, Mystica, in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> missed you. It's good to be back. Good place. I'm getting some, a double here from, from Mr. Costas. Congratulations to the club. To the club for being what it is. Plano West Rotary, I will join you. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, thanks, guys. So I gotta get up close to who else is here. Hey, Catherine, you ever break for us this afternoon? Uh, I am grateful for the beautiful weather this morning for our volunteer event um, with Plano ISD schools, putting that food in the trunk for students. Um, and also just when I get down about how I don't have enough help, somebody calls me and tells me that they can help more. So I am grateful for that. What well, it's all about. Thank you. Jennifer, do you have a break? Sure. Um, I, my two- Hand me your dollar through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my daughter was a counselor last week at the Heritage Farmstead Museum camp, and she was counselor of the day. And my son is a lifeguard and was also named lifeguard of the week for City of Plano. Hey, John. And I want to throw, wait, Mike, I want to say, and that same daughter is going to be the founding uh, president of the Vines High School Interact Club that we're starting. Hey. Woo! Let's see here. Uh, Christina Todd, do you ever break? Uh, I guess, kind of. Um, I know it's summer. I'm a teacher, so I get to kind of spend some time with my husband because I just got married. And so. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, congratulations. Well, thank you. Mr. Dow, do you ever break for us this afternoon? Uh, I, I just popped on and uh, this is my first point of rotary meeting. I'm just saying good news that happened to me or. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. or whatever. Uh, Mr. Would you tell the new people they have to sing their high school fight song? <laughs> 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 All right. uh, a great piece of news. I actually just purchased my first home. So. I've got <laughs> <a great> <laughs> <home>. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Well, all right, Ian. Way to go. Mr. Watton, we don't see you, but you ever bragged this afternoon? Steve Lott. Steve Lott. Going yes, on. sir. Finally you got the bragged. last load of furniture moved out of my house. It'll be on the market early July. Oh, wow. Well, hey, good for that. Uh, Courtney, do you ever brag this afternoon? I sure do, actually. So my in-laws actually had a small house fire, but everything was fine. Their house is okay, and everybody is good. So I would consider that a brag. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Wendy, do you ever brag? Yes, I do. Um, I just moved into my second apartment, actually. Yeah, my second apartment here in Dallas um, is in Carrollton, so it's close to Plano. Um, so I'm very happy about that. Great. Hey. I think my five minutes are up, Mr. President, so it's back to you. Yes, thank you very much, Mike. Yeah. Well, next, um, what I'm going to ask, Benton, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, we need to have a substitute for the prayer, and Fred Thomas just joined us. So would you, oh, no, sorry, Bitten. Here she comes. So Rosalind. Rosalind. Yes, hello. You can lead us in the prayer right now. Absolutely. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for, um, for this time of gathering together to serve our world, Lord, and we just thank you for the blessing each and every last one of us as, as uh, we bless others. We thank you for a wonderful day and for a time of, of uh, fellowship and learning and just coming together. In, in your name we pray, amen. Amen, thank you. Now, Fred Thomas, you have joined us. So can you lead us in the pledge, my friend? Um. You're on mute. Fred T, you're muted. We can do it here. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, go for it, group. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. With liberty liberty. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry oh, about that, Mr. Alex. <laughs> well, that's all right. Well, I'm now, as everybody too. knows, we're about to do what I consider, you know, the most important thing for our club. We're going to vote and induct a new member. Now, we've, we've known and volunteered Jen Scherzer and her family for the last couple years, and so it's awesome that she's joining us. But before we do this, we need to vote. So mm -hmm. as everybody knows, or actually some people don't know, we are going to use the Zoom voting capability, the poll. So if you're not in our club, don't vote. So that means Tom, Christina, Jennifer, you can't vote for yourself. And who else? I think that's, oh, and Ian. See, I, I already thought you remember Ian. See, <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> so everybody, I'm gonna put it out there and vote quickly. And then we gotta figure out how to do, oh, Glenn, you're tracking it locally, right? Sure. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Here it goes. Are we good? We're good. So there's seven right there. <laughs> I think we've got a few more. Come on, everybody hit that button. We know who hasn't voted. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Jennifer, as expected, it was unanimous. You have been voted into the Rotary Club of Plano West. Now, that was just a vote. So now this is, well, you've actually seen this before. You've been part of our meeting, so this isn't a surprise. Well, now I'm going to speak to you. So everybody else is in the audience. And this is where we induct you into the Rotary Club. So Jennifer Scherzer, you have been proposed for membership and the club has elected you. Therefore, it is my pleasure to induct you into the Rotary Club of Plano West. 
I understand you are aware of Rotary's requirements and will follow them. You have offered your services to assist your fellow Rotarians in their community and international projects. As you know, Rotary is a service club, each member performing what Rotary terms as service above self. Besides service, you will have the benefit of powerful bonds of friendship with fellow Rotarians locally and worldwide. I especially commend to you the attention of the object of Rotary and the four-way test, which form the criteria for Rotarians in their daily lives. When you travel, you have a special opportunity to attend Rotary meetings and meet Rotarians throughout the world. This is another rewarding benefit of your membership. And now, by the power vested in me as president of the Rotary Club of Plano, Plano West, I'm gonna pin virtually pin this Rotary emblem on you and declare you to be an active member of this Rotary Club. Welcome to Rotary. We look forward to the enrichment of our lives in your own by your, association, Welcome, by your association with the world's oldest, largest, and finest service organization, Rotary International. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking forward to meeting all of the people I have not met yet. I'm very excited. Well, you'll meet us without a mask now, right? Yeah. And did you, are you coming to our barbecue? Yeah, I just told my husband about it. So we're going to go. Cool. We have over 50 people showing up. So that will be a great opportunity for everybody to get to know you more than, than we have. And thank you for joining us, Jen. You're welcome. I'm excited. All right. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the foundation as we do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a little video um, that uh, talks about the foundation, because as we know, this is one of the key ways that we have impact on our community and our club has led the fountain led led and we're actually in top three for pro rata. Uh, annual fund giving as well as Polio Plus. And we're really proud of that. We are a 100% giving club and we are also 100% every Rotarian every year club, which we will talk a little bit about that more. And I'll also say that our board of directors yesterday, we all agreed to participate at a minimum level in every Rotarian every year for this next Rotary year. And we're gonna be encouraging the rest of our club to do the same. And we'll be talking a little bit about that more. But with that said, let's talk about what the foundation does. So I will show this video. That is our foundation. And you, you guys, our club is not only strong givers of the foundation, but we take we, we utilize it through our district grants for education. And we also have our global grant team that's pursuing it for homelessness. So the foundation not only is hitting the global activities, but we actually use it locally as well. So with that, now I'm gonna turn it over to Roxana and she's going to lead the member moment. So take it away, Roxana.
you're muted if you're talking. Now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Roxana and welcome to our membership moment. So every month, uh, our members, one member of our club will be our guest and they will present themselves. And this week I have the honor uh, to introduce a valuable member. Her name is Wendy Zambu. So Wendy, tell us about yourself and how are you doing? Hi guys, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, um, I'm doing good so far. It's good to meet you guys and all the faces and the people I've never met before. Um, so, sorry, there's a truck that just pulled up. It's the ambulance truck. So if you hear any noise, I apologize. Um, but my name is Wendy. Um, I just moved to Dallas, Texas about, I want to say six months ago. Um, when I first moved, the first thing I did was, you know, I joined the Rotary Club. I was a previous member in Boston, but because I was new to Dallas, I wanted a sense of community. Um, therefore, um, you know, that prompted me to join the Rotary Club of uh, Plano. Um, I'm originally from Cameroon. Uh, I think I've been in the U.S. for about seven, eight years. Um, I mostly lived in Boston pretty much the entire time. And then I just decided I wanted to move and just, you know, do something a little different. Um, so there's that. Right now I work. Um, I see that you wanted my side. No, okay, I see. Right now I just work. Um, I take care of my daughter. I have a two-year-old. Um, we're going through the phase of terrible twos, but it's okay. I'm hanging in there. Um, and for my hobbies, I like to work out. I like to read a lot. And I just picked up a new hobby called uh, furniture flipping. So you just find old furniture that people don't want and you take it and you fix it up and you repaint it and you can sell it back on Facebook Marketplace and make a profit. So that's what I do now. And um, that's it, it's good to meet all of you guys. Thank you, Wendy. How are you doing? Um, how is uh, the therapy doing uh, not, from your neck? Yeah, not too bad, the neck is getting better. And it's still stiff, but the therapy, I go every two, twice a week, so Wednesdays and Fridays. So hopefully it gets a little more loose and things like that. Thank you for checking up. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy, you thank, thank you. I also want to say that Wendy is heading up our International Understanding Committee, because as we, everybody may not remember, we have uh, members that are immigrants from eight different countries. Wendy's Cameroon, we have Nigeria, Liberia, uh, Gambia, uh, we have Nepal, India, Pakistan, and Mexico. And so what we're doing, we're starting off with Cameroon, we are um, establishing relationships with the Rotary Club from Wendy's hometown. Now, we have no idea what we're going to do. This isn't necessarily to do joint projects, but just to get to know each other, because from talking with Wendy, Cameroon's a lot different than Plano. <laughs> For one, it's all French. So we're trying to figure out how to deal with that complexion. But we're going we're gonna to have that in all the different countries because that is the power of Rotary, of us having uh, international relationships, partners, and fellow Rotarians. So um, as we, we're kind of using Cameroon as a beta test, and then we will support the other clubs doing the same thing to find a Rotary Club in their hometown. So um, I, I, we have to commend Wendy to step up to do that. When I asked her, she's like, yes, <laughs> just obedient. You said Cameroon? Yes. And I think, didn't your mom immediately find a, a Rotary Club like the next day or something for you? Yeah. And then she was then I discovered there's like eight of them there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. I was surprised we have so much. I was like, oh my God, wow. I didn't know that, but yeah. That's the that power of Rotary. Yeah, okay. I know. Well, thank you, Wendy. And um, thank you for being our member of the day. All right, well, thank what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go on to our club business. So that way we can have our guest speaker, which is um, the real show today. 
I want to uh, remind everybody to welcome Julia Lynn and Molly Hancock. Uh, Julia Lynn, we are gonna be inducting her next week on the 29th. And then Molly, uh, we're gonna be inducting her on July 6th. Uh, those you may not remember, Julia Lynn, she was actually um, president of the Plano Senior High School Interact Club. She just graduated. She was district governor for Interact for the district. She represented us at the district four-way test speech contest and won it. She turned 18 tomorrow. So she is ready to join Rotary as soon as she is Rotary legal able. So she will definitely be one of the youngest Rotarians in the world by about six days. <laughs> And so that's pretty awesome. And then Molly, I know a number of us, she volunteered with us as well. And, uh, Molly's really active in the community. So everybody, um, do what we do. Call, text, email, welcome them to the club. Um, when you see them at a service project, be sure to say hi. And that'll be exciting. Also, I need to say today is the last day um, to get some rotary bling. You can use the link, bit.ly rotary, oh, Actually, I skipped it. Bitly Rotary Apparel, that's the third one. Like Roxana, isn't this the last day and you're gonna take your orders like tomorrow or something? Yes, tomorrow I'm placing the orders for the shirt. So go ahead, you have today to, to place your orders. Um, we, we, uh, we love to see you in, in our Rotary Plano West shirts. Exactly. So. Well, how long? Like, what's the deadline time today? Like, when can uh, they we... have tomorrow? I'm placing the order in the morning, so you have all day today to to put your orders in. Perfect. So click the link, order what you want. You know, get you pay online, and um, Roxana will take care of it. So, uh, bullet number two, Rotary waiver. I think we have about forty percent of our club have done their waivers. So everybody, uh, do the waiver. We, July 1st is coming up, so we need everybody's waivers in place, uh, the waiver and release. Uh, district reward submissions, Zane has done a phenomenal job of leading that team. And honestly, everybody give Brandon. Uh, Brandon's been reading, rewriting, and making everything great, being the great lawyer that he is. He deserves a lot of thanks. <laughs> I would not, Tom's smiling because he's a lawyer too. <laughs> Tom, I asked our club member to read, read and rewrite all of our um, nominations for district awards. And I think it was about, what was that, 12, Zane? How many were there? Yeah, eight to 12, something around that range. And he had combined stuff. So yay, Brandon, I don't think he's on here, but they get submitted today by midnight. So, and great job, Zane, for leading our nomination committee. I do wanna remind everybody on this upcoming Saturday, uh, there's district roundtable. That's where the leadership of the district gets together and they're having a service project. And it's actually in Plano. Um, so if you click the link on there, you could go um, get all the details of it. Uh, the times, I think they moved the times till nine and it's at Haggard Party Barn, which is in Plano. And then of course, I wanna say everybody, um, <clears throat> we need to, um, do the evite and come to the party if you're in town, our potluck. As I said before, there's no pomp and ceremony at this. We're gonna probably take about a whole 30 seconds say, oh, here's the new board, but you guys already know it because you've been emailed it. And then we're gonna go back to the festivities. So uh, please sign up for the potluck barbecue. I was told by Laura, there's over 50 people that have RSVP for it. So it will definitely be a fun time. and. If you're vaccinated, don't wear a mask. If you are, wear a mask. We're gonna leave it up to a personal choice. All right, well now let's go into, this is a part of the club, the meeting that <clears throat> I'm really proud of when we have guests, especially if we have Rotary International guests, Tom and other Rotarians, Christina. This is where we talk about what makes our club amazing. How we serve is what we did last week, not last month, but in the last seven days, we had three different service projects. Um, for those that don't know, our club, by, by the end of next week, we will have completed 75 service projects for the year. So we average over six a month. Last week, we did curbside meals, which technically is six service projects in one day, because Catherine leads a team of, I think, 21 volunteers that 
um, provides food at six campuses in the morning, and then they do six campuses in the afternoon. So when you, I, I think Catherine and Rosalind were probably doing it because they're wearing our volunteer t-shirts, if not more. So we did that, we're, as everybody knows, we do that every Tuesday uh, for the summer. And uh, thank you, Catherine and all of her volunteers. That's 21 volunteers every week um, doing it. And some days Catherine's driving to all campuses um, just to make sure things are running well. We also, on Saturday, we had two projects. Uh, we had our COVID awareness block walking that we're partnering with the city. We're about halfway done with providing the COVID education information to the, the targeted neighborhoods. Mahir's going to be um, finishing off the project. I think in July, we're gonna start again and finish off the remaining couple neighborhoods. So if you want to have a definite impact, um, the city has said we have raised Hispanic vaccinations 9%, totally attributable to us. And so we are reducing hospitalizations, we're reducing infection rates and getting people out in society. So we're truly making an impact. So definitely sign up for that project. And then we had our uh, first time ever, we were cleaning up Barron neighborhood. And thank you, Glenn. Um, in honor of Rotary having the seventh area of focus, we, we've, we always did about at least six every other month uh, environmental projects. Well, we're gonna now do one every month where we do our adopt a highway every other month. And then we partner with the city when they do the big city um, cleanups. And then the months that we're not doing adopt a highway or with the city, we are actually using city resources to either clean up Barron Elementary or Douglas Community. And so we're gonna alternate. So this is the first time we did Barron. Glenn, how many bags did we have? <laughs> I think there was um, six full bags and then some other miscellaneous stuff. It was a, I didn't know what to expect because we haven't done it. And so, you know, we got six bags of garbage, so we made a difference. So I encourage everybody to um, sign up. With, and the next time we do it, I think we're doing Adopt a Highway where we're cleaning a stretch of uh, Avenue K. What was that, Glenn? Did you pick like July 30th or something like that? July 31st. July 31st. So um, it'll be posted soon. So that's what we did over the last seven days, those three service projects. Great job. Well, next week, is, we're going to have two service projects. We have curbside meals, which is going on today. <laughs> They've done the first three campuses this morning. Then they're going to do the uh, three campuses this afternoon. Thank you, team. And I think last time I checked, you had, you had a pretty good amount of volunteers, didn't you, Catherine? for today or for this afternoon? Actually, we are a little light. This last, this last Tuesday, we, we had quite a few. I think this week, everybody started their vacations. So um, Rosalind should get credit because she immediately, she was the one who this morning, when I mentioned that we were a little short, um, is gonna come back and, and help again at four. So yay, Rosalind. Yay, Ros. Thank you. So if anybody, what, what time is that? When, when is the afternoon one, is that four? It's at, yeah, it's at four. So if anybody has any freedom at four o'clock, I think the schools are Shepton High School. Well, you say it, Catherine, you know where they're at. Um, so we're Shepton Clark, which is the one that actually has the, the, the most uh, students coming through and then Bowman Middle School on the east, east side, which also is the second highest in terms of number of students served. So if you have a couple, what, an hour and a half at four o'clock, show up there and um, Catherine or her fellow volunteers will put you to work. So awesome. Well, then also this week and two, or tomorrow, actually, we are going to have our second orientation for the Plano Overnight Warming Station. For those that don't know, we are um, building a team to man the Overnight Warming Station this winter. We will be the first non-church doing it, and we're training, um, we're trying to train 50 volunteers, but we need 25 to man it. Uh, Courtney's the team leader for that. She's been doing a fantastic job. And right now, 
We have an orientation tomorrow where people just show up, they get a, a Zoom presentation on what it takes to get certified as a PALS volunteer. And then we have training in August. So I encourage you to sign up for that. And as I say every week, it's a lot easier than I thought because we're not really there all night. They have paid staff and police that are there in the hardcore sleeping hours. And so our job is to welcome, make them feel comfortable and show respect to those experiencing homelessness. When we've got these crazy winters, which you think of what we went through this winter, it's probably gonna happen more than normal. So if you haven't um, gone through the orientation, I have, sign up and talk to Courtney if you have any questions. So with that, you guys are done hearing me talk. So now we're gonna talk to Mr. District Governor elect nominee, Howard Templin, and you, he's gonna introduce our guest speaker. Take it away, Howard. To introduce today, Tom Thor Thorfinson. Sorry, Tom, I cannot say that very quickly. Uh, he is the Chief Strategy Officer for Rotary International. He's been an active Rotarian serving Rotary in a number of volunteer capacities, including the 2016 uh, co-moderator for the Rotary Leadership Training Institute. He served for five years on the Strategic Planning Committee as either a member or a liaison. Tom was a member of the RI Board of Directors from 20, uh, 2009 to 2011 and served as Rotary's Vice President from 2010 to 2011. Most recently, Tom served as Vice Chair uh, and Trustee of the Rotary Foundation. He resigned from the trustees to take on the Chief Strategy Officer position. Tom combines over 30 years of corporate law and governance practice together with his expertise, but extensive volunteer experience. Uh, he brings a fresh volunteer perspective to this executive management position. Using the sports vernacular, Tom considers the decision to simply have moved from one position to another. And let's all Rotarians, let's welcome Tom Torf Thorfinson. Thank you, everyone. Good to be with you. Um, I will tell you that I was forced to join Rotary right out of law school. I joined my father's law firm and he said it would be good for business. So that's how I ended up where I am to a large extent. Um, I joined a club that was 127 members strong, all male. All but one individual was white. Um, uh, the first job I was asked to do was to bring the junior Rotarians from the high school to uh, the club meetings and uh, went over, drove over to the high school, picked up a male and a female student who were in their senior year at high school. Uh, we walked into the meeting and they both looked at me and said, why aren't there women in this club? And uh, that was my first real experience as a volunteer. Uh, and so um, I don't know how, my path has developed over the years to get me to where I am, but I have um, served as a volunteer in almost every position uh, that Rotary has. Uh, my passion over the years was water and sanitation projects um, in developing countries. I've had the pleasure of making a number of trips to developing countries over the years. Um, first and foremost, um, it's been in Haiti. I have been part of 10 different volunteer um, trips to that country and, and have put together a number of uh, water and sanitation projects um, over those years. That really was what uh, drove me down the path of, of getting involved uh, in Rotary at a higher level um, in terms of leadership. But um, I'm gonna share with you a few, a few slides that I have um, and uh, I'm gonna go through them rather, rather quickly. So hopefully we have some time um, for me to, to interact, to answer a few questions with you. I took this position uh, five years ago now, almost. Um, and I took on the position largely to help the organization create a new strategic position uh, approach uh, to how we're doing business. Um, and in that process, the first thing we did, um, let's see get this going right. 
The first thing we did was develop a vision statement. Um, and this is the new vision statement for both Rotary International and the Rotary Foundation. Um, it took us almost a year to do this. Um, 24 words, two words a month, um, not the fastest pace in the world, but we did pick up the pace as time passed. And really what we were doing in that first year was an awful lot of base research. We were looking at the typical SWOT analysis, looking at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. We did an awful lot of outreach in terms of focus groups across the globe. And I'm sure most of you are aware that Rotary stands at about 1.15 million Rotarians in 37,000 Rotary clubs in almost 200 different countries and geopolitical uh, regions. As a result, it's a difficult task to really get your arms around what Rotary is and, and what we are in terms of our makeup and what we're all about. This vision statement, if you look at it, has a couple of things that are unique. And first and foremost, you don't see the word Rotary or Rotarian in this statement. What we're trying to embrace is the idea of joining forces. Together, we see a world where people unite, not where Rotarians unite, but where people unite. Um, and we take action to create lasting change, but that change that we're looking to, to create in the world, it has three different aspects. There's that global piece, which is a big part of what we do, and particularly in the context of eradicating polio. There's a local base that's, that's huge. Um, a great example is what your club's doing in the 75 projects that you've taken on this year. But there's also this internal aspect. Um, joining Rotary um, gives you an opportunity to become a better person, um, to engage with others, develop lasting friendships, uh, but really look at yourself in the context of what can I do to be part of the fabric of our communities, um, to really contribute in a significant way. And I got to tell you, I walked into that Rotary Club uh, because I had to, uh, but Rotary has embraced me and made me a much better person over the years. So let's go through just briefly what we've developed in terms of the action plan for the organization and how we are going to create lasting change as an organization. And with each of the priorities that I will unfold in front of you, there are there is a very specific slide that gives you a few ideas from a club-based perspective as to what you could be doing. In the process of our research, we developed what we thought were four significant priorities for this action plan. And you can see them here in no particular order. It's increase our impact, expand our reach, enhance participant engagement. Notice I use, we use the word participant. It isn't just Rotarians that we're looking at. We're looking at anybody that gets involved in the Rotary experience. We want that experience to continue to be better experience and, and finally increasing our ability to adapt. Um, so I'm going to go through these really quickly, the four priorities and a little bit of why we created them. Um, increase our impact is a very significant from a programmatic perspective. Our research told us that the younger you are, the more important causes are and the more important impact from those causes. It's not enough today to just simply do good in the world. It's, it's a question of, is the work that you're doing actually valuable? Are you delivering lasting change in the context of the issues you're trying to address? And, and we also discovered, and, and I think most of us know this, that funding opportunities today from foundations, from corporations are clearly tied to impact. What's our ability today to actually walk into Hilton Foundation and demonstrate in that presentation that the work that we're doing is actually creating lasting change and that they should be a part of it and they should join us in the funding of our efforts. Um, so one of the things we did back in 2017 when we started this process was to not ask questions about Rotary, uh, but instead we asked everyone that we came in touch with, if you were in the perfect ideal membership organization, what would the cause that you'd be interested in? What would it be? And we didn't just ask about the areas of focus that are part of the Rotary Foundation. We asked a number of different areas. And, and here you see highlighted globally what is the most important. Now, that does not mean that it's the most important in your community. 
But this is the kind of question you should be asking as a club. What are the things that the people that, that are joining forces with you, the people that want to make a difference in your community, what are, what are the causes that they think we need to address? To some extent, globally, this is telling you something. Um, and the environment popped up here in this process. And, and I highlight those, this is 2017. And as many of you may know, we've added in the Rotary Foundation environment as an area of a focus. It's a new one. It's starting as of July 1. And it's a result of this survey work um, that we're doing that. Um, and maybe that was obvious to all of us, but it was really important for our leadership to see that Rotarians viewed environment as one of the top five causes, that our younger participants, Rotaractors, see it as third in their list. And I got to tell you, it's, it's popped up higher in the last three years since this survey was done. But the alumni, the people that have been part of our programs, the Peace Fellows, the, the Youth Exchange students, the others view the environment as extremely important. And then we actually bought a list of young professionals, the kind of people we're trying to attract to the organization. And their basic literacy and environment were tired, tied as the top category. Um, so from a club perspective, here's a few things to keep in mind. And I think you're probably doing this and doing it well, but obviously you wanna develop a strategy. Um, you don't wanna just a one year, one off approach to things. It's really important that you do a community assessment. Um, what are the needs in your community? Don't just go out there and assume. And, and those don't have to be tremendously complex. It might be sitting down with a principal of the elementary schools, uh, talking to a kindergarten teacher. What's the readiness for a student as, as they come into kindergarten? Do they know their ABCs? Can they count to 20? What about sight words and what can they recognize? Uh, a lot of the research in the United States that, that we did relative to literacy tells us that if you're born into a family below the poverty line, there is a significant learning gap from birth to kindergarten. And it really is exposure to words. And, and so that could be a major initiative for you, but it's based on what the needs are in your own community and what you wanna get involved in. I strongly encourage every club to develop an identity, have one signature initiative, that is part and parcel of what your club is and what it does and do that for a number of years. Polio eradication for Rotary um, has been long and it has been tremendously difficult, but it has created a signature for our organization that's truly meaningful. Um, and at a club, oftentimes that's important stuff. Um, and then tell the stories, um, the successes. So the second priority, expand our reach. Um, you probably have a pretty good sense of it. Um, I will tell you that I want everyone to keep in mind these numbers in the last 10 years. Uh, we've had almost 1.4 million Rotarians join the organization and we've had more than that leave the organization. Um, that tells you that they're coming in and not necessarily satisfied with the product. Um, and all of both of these numbers are more than the number of Rotarians that we have in the organization. Um, so um, in the context of expanding our reach, I put a couple Girl Scout cookies out here, Thin Mints. Um, I want you to think about WAGS, which is the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. They reached out to us recently. There's 10 and a half million girls that are in the scouting programs across the globe in over a hundred countries. They are reaching out to us because they have found out that we have taken on the environment as an area of focus. And they are interested in joining forces with us. This is the kind of outreach that we need to be thinking about. When we talk about expanding our reach, it isn't just bringing three more people into your club. It's looking at organizations like this in your community that maybe you want to associate with. And, and it doesn't mean you have to wait for Tom and my team to negotiate some kind of international agreement with this organization. There's a Girl Scout troop right down the street. There's probably uh, an organization in the greater um, Dallas area. Maybe this is, and I'm not saying this is the one to outreach to, but this is the kind of thing we need to think about when we talk about this priority. So in the context of your club, you know, it's pretty simple. Set a goal relative to this. Target some, some groups, um, whatever that might be. Be. It might be an alumni association of a university in town. Um, it could be something else altogether. We have a lot of tools to help in this regard. And once again, 
much of your success in expanding the reach of your club is going to be dependent on what kind of story you can tell. Um, and it isn't just having an amazing salesperson like Alex, who's doing a great job and, and all the other members of your club, but what are you selling? Um, what is that story that's behind it? Um, and maybe it's a story around polio eradication. Um, it's a lot more relevant today than we thought it was uh, because what we have done in the context of eradicating that infectious disease is exactly what the world has faced in the context of the pandemic today. How do you globally deliver a vaccine? How do you develop, how do you deliver that in the context of low and lower income countries? And what can Rotary do in that, in that role um, moving forward? So um, third priority, enhanced participant engagement. I kind of gave you a clue about the word participant. You don't see enhanced Rotarian engagement. We realize that there's a lot more contact with people beyond just our members and we want them to continue to have a good experience with Rotary. The more they have in terms of a good Rotary experience, the more likely that they will unite with us to help create lasting change. Um, this slide I put together for you, globally, these are the reasons why people have joined in the last year. Um, local service is number one. What's number two is personal growth, networking, connections, lasting friendships, is in the fourth category. Um, global service is on the rise. That used to be a much lower category and it's becoming increasingly more important. And it may be more important in your own club, I don't know. It, it sounds like it with the diversity of your membership and, and the countries in which a lot of your members come from that there could be a strong interest in that regard. So I'm, I'm gonna show you two slides. Um, this one gives you a sense of what happens globally in terms of membership. Um, the bars represent the number of Rotarians that are in any given year of membership in Rotary. So those that are just in their first year, on average during the year, there's about 75,000 people in that category. Second year is of course the peak. And, and we end up with about 110,000 Rotarians across the globe that are in their second year of membership in Rotary but you see what happens afterwards and the significant drop off. And this is why engagement is so critical for us as an organization is we're bringing people in the door, but we're not necessarily doing a great job in terms of, of continuing uh, to keep them in the organization. The next slide is the same type of thing, but it's only for Western Europe. So just look at the difference in the heights of these bars as we move to Western Europe. You see what's happening in Western Europe, they're, they're doing a tremendous job of hanging on to their members. So there's lessons to be learned. Our current president, uh, Holger Knock, is from Germany. He speaks about being careful in terms of caring for your members and recognizing that the individuals that join your club are candidates for lifelong friendship and treat the individuals that way. And, and it's amazing the value you get out of Rotary when you focus on others in your club as your best friends. Um, satisfaction levels, really important for us. We're paying a lot of attention to it right now in the context of the pandemic. Um, how satisfied are our members? It's just global figures. Um, I have no idea what your club may be feeling in this regard. We pay attention to this um, and we're looking at it very closely right now in the pandemic to make sure it's not changing significantly because of the experience and the, and the different ways in which people are meeting. Are people remaining satisfied? Are they more satisfied? There's a lot more service going on this year um, and that's doing us a lot of good. And uh, the, the you know online meetings may be a challenge for some clubs. Not every club does the amazing job that you're doing with an online experience um, for your meetings. So um, why are people leaving? And, and this just gives people a sense um, in, in some sense of why people are leaving, cost, time. But I gotta tell you, those aren't reasons why people leave. Um, they are just an indication of value. The ones in the middle, are you doing enough? Are we impactful enough? Those are reasons why. If you are delivering value, then the cost isn't an issue. I'm willing to pay uh, to be part of that club. Um, and I'm willing to dedicate my time to it. Um, 
So um, the last one, increase our ability to adapt. We, many of us have done a pretty good job of adapting in the context of the pandemic. Um, keep in mind that our organization is somewhere in the 160th year. Our governance structure from the volunteer side has uh, uh, was created in the 1930s and 40s. Um, we've added layers. Um, it's maybe a little too, uh, uh, too many layers, a little too much hierarchy. Um, and when we developed this priority, there was a lot of focus on that issue and our ability as leaders to actually move and move quickly. Um, I think you're doing a great job in this context. I look at the pandemic um, and of course it's a, it's a horrible experience, but it's also an opportunity for us to really open our eyes and look at, look at things in a different way um, and take advantage of the crisis um, and take an advantage in the context of serving in more meaningful ways, but also in engaging with people in different ways. So um, just some quick ideas in the context of this priority, um, innovate. Um, Set aside a small amount of your funds for some new ideas. Um, look at look at your club structure. Is it much like Rotary International with too many layers? I kind of doubt it, but those are the things um, to look at. So I'm gonna end with a quick story. Um, and I, I think at the heart and soul of what Rotary is, is the magic is, is a combination of two things. And it's pretty simple, really. It's, it's service and it's those friendships. And when those things, those two things are delivered and delivered well. It's a pretty magical experience. And, and so the story I have for you is the story of, of Larry Olson. Um, I started the club I'm in right now about a dozen years ago. Um, and one of the individual I invited to be a charter member of that club was a guy named Larry Olson. And Larry Olson and I met on the softball field. Um, we weren't on the same softball team. Uh, we were the only two dads, uh, parents that were willing to coach the girls in the t-ball um, arena. Um, we ended up coaching together for years. Our daughters played together for years. I got to tell you, I was a better coach than Larry was. Um, and my daughter was clearly a better athlete than Larry's daughter. But we, despite that, Larry continued to, to keep up the friendship with me. Um, he joined the club. He was in the business of wholesale coffee uh, sales and delivery. And he made sure for every meeting and every event that he took care of the coffee and provided it. And sometimes that was a big deal and sometimes it wasn't a big deal. Um, Larry became close friends with a number of us in the club, including a guy named Jim Lidstrom. About five years ago, Larry developed pancreatic cancer. It was terminal. Um, and Jim Lindstrom stepped up. Um, they had developed the closest of friendships. And Jim created two things. He created a spreadsheet and he had us volunteer. And every Wednesday night, somebody from our club showed up in Larry and Linda's house with a hot meal for four people. And if they wanted us to join them, we join them. If they didn't, they had extra meals. Um, he also made sure that every day Larry was in the hospital, someone from our club visited. I mean, literally. We're a club of 36, 37 members. And he made sure that if someone else didn't go, he went to that hospital every day. And when Larry passed away, every one of us showed up for the funeral. That's the essence of what Rotary is. Um, it is that magic that comes from people joining together to really create lasting change. I mean, truly joining together like-minded people who become your best friends, who together take on some of the toughest issues. Um, and no one, no one thought 38 years ago that we could eradicate polio from the face of the earth. Right now, we've gone five months, almost six, with only two cases worldwide. And it's been over four months without without a single case. Uh, so it's good stuff. Um, with that, I'll pass it back to Mr. President, Alex. Um, and happy to answer questions if you have time. Um, I'm not hard to find. If you if you have questions that you wanna email me, um, it's just tom.thorfinson at rotary.org. Um, you know, 
my email address is out there. You can harass me, and, and if I can't help you, somebody from the team will. Um, I do have with me on this call, Amanda Ottman. She's hiding. Amanda is a peace fellow. Um, she is a scholar who studied um, peace and conflict resolution in Argentina about 10 years ago. She is a manager of external relations, basically working on um, international partnerships for us um, and is part of the discussions with the World Association of Girl Guides and, and uh, Girl Scouts. So um, questions? We have time for a couple, so ask I some can't. questions, anyone? What about from the Greek Isle Room? Do we have any questions in there? I saw someone raising their hand. This is Howard Templin. Um, in, I believe it was 2018, you spoke at our district conference and introduced this whole strategic planning thing. And it's been interesting to see how it's evolved and uh, how it's taking hold and having some success. And I thank you for uh, speaking to us then. And this is a great presentation now. And uh, I'm gonna spread the word a little bit if you don't mind. I, I'd like to see other clubs benefit from uh, what you have to say. Thank you. Yep, and I will tell you, I don't speak to every club. Alex twisted my arm, but... Um, Thanks for your kind words. Um, other questions or comments? Come on, we're screwing up. You got to at least give us some feedback on things we could improve on. Or, uh... Well, I, I encourage you, Tom and Amanda, to um, attend next week. And, and you, you'll, you'll see our feedback on the Rotary Action Plan, because as you know, we've been implementing it all year uh, to great success. And I'm sorry, but we're running out of time. We don't have any more time for questions. And so um, we, we've been implementing it. So next week, everybody will see the results of Plano West Rotary implementing the Rotary Action Plan. And so I, I, this is our uh, way of people understanding that it works, but we wanted to implement it first. Well, great job. I'm just truly impressed. Um, it's been a pleasure linking up with you. Um, I would, I, Alex, I, I talked to you about maybe speaking to my club. I think it might be better if, if my club attends one of your meetings and actually sees the entire show because it's, this is really well run. I'm, I'm really impressed with what you're doing. Um, so great job. Well, thank you. One thing that we do and in honor of our, uh, in appreciation for your time and program, Plano West Rotary will donate $10 in your name to the Rotary's Polio Plus Fund. And as you know, <laughs> together with the two to one matching funds um, from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, your $10 will turn into 30 and it will provide a polio vaccine for about 50 children. And I know you know all this, Tom, but for everybody else watching, you know, Rotary is using the polio infrastructure to aid in the vaccination efforts for COVID-19. So, your donation will support those efforts alone. And so Tom, you're truly gonna get this. We did this for John too. So <laughs> we submitted an RI in your names that will add up to all your many levels in, in, in the Rotary Foundation. But this is something we've been doing for, I think the last three years with our, uh, our guest speakers. And we, we feel it's the most important thing that we can do in support of the Rotary Foundation. And, we really appreciate you uh, speaking to us and taking the time. So thank you. Good, good to be with you. Thank you. So to close out our meeting, well, before we close out our meeting, I wanna remind everybody next week, well, one, the potluck barbecue on Sunday. If you haven't signed up, sign up. It's for our club members, spouses, friends, family, and you're invited as well. Tom and Amanda, if you wanna fly down, you are welcome. <laughs> we would love you to. So this is just a fun gathering. There's nothing formal about it. Howard RSVP'd, um, John Mosier, our current district governor RSVP'd, and Max DuPlant, our district governor-elect, she's trying to make it. So um, it'll give our members the opportunity of meeting you know, some of the leadership in our district. And then next Tuesday, we will have our a year in review. 
So like I said, our club has accomplished a lot. I, I love bragging about our amazing members um, from service, impact, expanding our reach, uh, just everything that we do. Well, we're gonna go through all of our accomplishments at a club in the lens of the Rotary Action Plan. So you'll see what we accomplished using this action plan all year. So I, everybody definitely participate. So to close out our meeting, I want to ask Courtney, you're gonna lead us in the four-way test. Take it away. Yes, the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. One, is it the truth? Two, is it fair to all concerned? Three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Four, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Rotary. Right, Rotary. Awesome, everybody. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.